Welcome back world explorers. I sure have missed your little faces and I hope you and your family are doing well. We just landed on our next continent, Africa. Africa is really cool. It's the second largest continent on earth and has 54 countries. Between 1,500 and 2,000 languages are spoken in Africa. Africa is home to many interesting landmarks as well, like Mount Kilimanjaro, the Pyramids of Giza, the Serengeti, Victoria Falls, and of course, all the cool animals. In Africa, you will find some of the largest mammals on this planet. Among them are the largest land mammal, the elephant, the tallest mammal, the giraffe, and the fastest mammal, you guessed it, the cheetah, who can run speeds up to 70 miles an hour. Also the zebra, gorilla, hippopotamus, chimpanzee, and wildebeest are also found in Africa. Africa has plateaus, huge mountains, long rivers, large lakes, massive deserts, valleys, rainforests, and grasslands. The longest river, river in the world is Africa. It's called the Nile River, and it's approximately 4,200 miles long. Also, the largest desert in the world is in Africa. It's called the Sahara, and it's bigger than the whole United States. Okay, so now I'm gonna read you a book about Egypt. Alan wa salan. That means hi in Arabic. My name is Amira and I live in Egypt. Egypt is a country in Africa where more than 90 million people live, including me. Egypt is in the northeast corner of Africa. It is part of a region called the Middle East. Much of the Middle East is hot and dry. It's covered with deserts. Almost all of Egypt's land is desert. The two largest deserts in Egypt are the Eastern Desert and the Western Desert. Animals such as cobras, hyenas, lynxes, and gazelles can be found there. The rest of Egypt's land is along the Nile River. The Nile River is the longest river in the world. It starts south of Egypt at the equator. It cuts through eastern Egypt, flowing from the south to the north, where it empties into the Mediterranean Sea. In the north, near the Mediterranean Sea, is the Nile River Delta. The land in the delta is perfect for growing crops, so this area is covered in farms. The south of Egypt has lots of mountains and hills. Along the Nile are many big cities like Cairo. Cairo is our capital and the largest city in Egypt. Near Cairo is Giza. At Giza are some of the coolest ancient monuments in Egypt, like the pyramids and the Great Sphinx. Alexandria is on the Mediterranean Sea. It was founded by the ancient King Alexander the Great. Port Said is where many goods come into Egypt through the Suez Canal. The canal connects the Mediterranean and the Red Seas and is important for trade. I live in an apartment in Cairo with my dad, grandma, and older sister. My, at, my dad owns a coffee shop down the street. There are lots of coffee shops in Cairo, but his is the best. My dad is often busy at work, so my grandma helps take care of my sister and me. My sister loves fashion. She wants to design clothes when she grows up. Each morning, my grandma, sister, and I eat breakfast together. My dad has to get up extra early to open up the shop, so he's already at work. 
Once my sister and I are ready, my grandma drives us to school. There are 22 students in my class. We study Arabic, English, French, math, science, social studies, gym, art, and religion. Our first subject this morning is religion. In Egypt, most people are Muslim. That means we follow a, re a religion called Islam. Today we're learning the five pillars of Islam, the things people must do or believe in to be Muslim. The first pillar, faith, means to believe in God and the prophet Muhammad and to declare your belief. The second pillar, prayer, means we perform the five prayers each day. The third pillar, charity, means helping those in need. And the fourth pillar, fasting, means we don't eat or drink during daytime in the month of Ramadan. Pilgrimage, the fifth pillar, means visiting Mecca if you're able. After religion, we study languages. I speak English, Arabic, and French. English and French are hard to write. The languages are different, but they both use the same alphabet and are written left to right. Arabic has its own alphabet and it's written right to left. Snack time! My grandma packed me chips and a sandwich. Yum! After we finish our snacks, we have gym class. Then we move on to our social studies lesson. History is my favorite subject. Egypt has a really long history. Around 5,000 BCE, people began living along the Nile River. Around 3100 BCE, these people invented one of the oldest written languages in the world called hieroglyphics. Hieroglyphics looked a lot like pictures and more than 700 symbols were used. Hieroglyphics could be read forward, backwards, or even down. To know which way the words should be read, you looked at which way the symbols were facing. Ancient Egyptians used hieroglyphics to write poetry, keep records, and tell stories about their gods and rulers. For many centuries, Egypt was split into the upper and the lower kingdoms. But around 3100 BCE, a king united the kingdoms. Over the next 2,000 years, Egypt blossomed. Ancient Egyptians invented things we use today, like toothbrushes, locks, and eye makeup. Egyptians built monuments for their rulers or pharaohs. Many of them still stand today, like the Great Sphinx the Karnak Temple, and more than 100 pyramids. Egypt also became a center for trade. People from all over the world came here to buy and sell things. But 2,000 years later, Egypt was weakening. The kingdom was overthrown many times, including by Alexander the Great of Greece in 332 BC. And after being part of many empires, Egypt was taken over by Arab Muslims from modern day Saudi Arabia in 642 CE. When Arab Muslims took over Egypt, they brought their religion, language, and culture too. Over hundreds of years, many people chose to follow Islam and learn the Arabic language. That's all we've learned so far. After history, we study math, art, and science, and then school's over. My grandma picks up my sister and me from school at three o'clock. My dad takes a break from work, and we eat a big lunch together. Today, we are eating kushari. Kushari is a dish of pasta, rice, lentils, chickpeas, and onions topped with tomato sauce. Yum. I like mine extra spicy with hot sauce, too. When we eat, we talk about the upcoming holiday. Hmm. Ramadan is 
the ninth month in the Muslim calendar and it starts next week. Remember the five pillars of Islam? During Ramadan, we fast, which means we don't eat or drink from sunrise to sunset. We have a big meal before sunrise and then another big meal at night with friends. Kids like me don't have to fast, but I wanna try it. Last year, I fasted for one morning, but this year I'm gonna to try to fast for one whole day. As part of Ramadan, we also pray more and give money to charities or volunteer. At the end of Ramadan, we have a big celebration. After lunch, I watch TV and then I do my homework. This afternoon, I'm helping my sister make a new hijab. A hijab is a head covering that Muslim women wear in public or when they pray. I'll wear a hijab when I'm older too. I hope my sister will make me a cool hijab like this. It's dinner time. In Egypt, dinner's a small meal. We often eat our leftovers from lunch or have something like molokaya. Molokaya is a vegetable soup made with garlic and other spices. After dinner, it's time for evening prayers. I'm not old enough to do the five prayers most Muslims do each day, but I do know how to pray Isha, the nightly prayer. When I pray, I wear a hijab like my grandma and sister and stand on a prayer rug. After prayers, it's time for bed. My sister and I flip through her fashion magazines before we go to sleep. We see pictures of fashion shows in Italy and Japan and India. I would like to go to all of those places. Would you like to visit Egypt someday? I sure would. Well, my world explorers, that's all for today. I can't wait to see you next time when we visit the continent of Asia. Have a great week.